All right, we're back with another episode, and today we're going to do something really fun, or at least I find fun, and we're going to look at six mind-blowing, mind-bending philosophical questions. So let's just get right into it. All right, here are five of the most mind-bending philosophical questions around. Number one, hotel infinity. The hotel infinity paradox aims to explain the concept of infinity. Picture a hotel in your mind. Try to imagine that this room has an infinite number of rooms with an infinite number of guests staying in them. Now imagine you walked up to the receptionist and asked for a room. Unfortunately, the infinite rooms are full of infinite guests, meaning that there is no room at the inn for you. Luckily, the desk manager has a brainwave. He says, I've got it. I'll just move the guest in room one to room two, and he does. He moves the guest that was in room two to room three, and room three to room four, and so on and so forth. An infinite number of guests getting bumped deeper into the infinite number of rooms. This seems perfectly reasonable. However, the hotel originally had an infinite number of guests, and now it has infinity plus one. So which number is really infinity? Number two, beetle in a box. Ludwig Wittgenstein was an Austrian-British philosopher. He published the book Philosophical Investigations in 1953. It has since come to be recognized as one of the most important works of philosophy in the 20th century. Wittgenstein also has, was the author of the famous Beetle in the Box thought experiment. For this thought experiment, Wittgenstein asks that we imagine a group of people who each have a box containing something called a beetle. No one can see into anyone else's box. Everyone else is asked to describe their beetle, but each person can only talk about their own beetle as there might be different things in each, person, in each person's box. Over time, the word beetle simply comes to mean the thing that's in each person's box. The mental experiment makes us think about how we describe our unique experiences. The beetle is like our mind. We can never know exactly what other people are experiencing, so if someone says that they are experiencing pain or love, we can never really know what that experience is like for them and whether it's the same for us. And that's very true, you know, in your mind, you're all by yourself, you know, nobody truly knows what you're experiencing. You can describe it to them, but nobody's going to truly know unless they experience what you're experiencing directly, which is pretty mind blowing. Number three, the trolley problem. One of the most well-known ethical thought experiments is the trolley problem. This experiment was recently used to dramatic effect in the TV series, The Good Place. The experiment goes like this. Imagine you are driving a trolley and the brake fail. Up ahead are five people tried tied to the trolley tracks. You can choose to switch your trolley to another track, however this track has one person tied to it. You are now in a moral dilemma. If you do nothing, five, will, five people will die. However, if you take action to save those five people, your deed will lead to the death of an innocent person. This could be the hardest philosophical question to answer. But yeah, it's a hard question to answer. What do you guys think? Would you rather say five people or one person? You know. I personally, I don't know, because if you say that you would rather save five, five people, you're basically implying that the lives of the majority matter more than the individual themselves. So the majority matters more than the individual, which I don't know. That's a difficult question to really answer, but that's up to you guys. What do you guys think? Let me know in the comments below. And uh, number four. The Experience Machine. The Experience Machine is a thought experiment put forward by philosopher Robert Nozick. In his 1974 book, Anarchy State and Utopia, suppose there was an experience machine that would give you any experience you desired. You, you can choose whatever experience you want to have by pre-programming the machine. Once in the machine, the brain would be stimulated so that it felt like you were experiencing everything you had programmed, so kind of like the Matrix. You would not know that these experiences weren't real. For you, they would just seem like ordinary life. Plugging into the machine would eliminate toil, struggle, suffering, and create a life of perfection. Would you plug in? Many people would choose not to because this perfect life would not be real. But what would the difference be? Now, would I choose this? You know, a life of no struggle, no pain. You know, I get, I get to experience everything I want to. Um, and you wouldn't know the difference between real or fake life. But me knowing this right now, I don't think I would want to. I don't know. I feel like that's the beauty in experiencing the good things in life is because you know about the bad things, right? So you appreciate the good things a lot more when you've experienced the bad. So that's the beauty of it. Number five, the ship of Theseus. One of the oldest of all thought experiments is the paradox known as the ship of Theseus, which originated with Number five, the ship of Theseus. One of the oldest of all thought experiments is the paradox known as the ship of Theseus, which originated in the writings of Plutarch. In this, philosoph in this philosophical question, you are asked to imagine a ship that has remained seaworthy for hundreds of years due to constant repairs. As soon as one plank becomes old, rotted, it would be replaced, and so on, until every working part of the ship was no longer original. 
The question is whether this ship is still the same ship of Theseus or something completely different. If not the same ship, at what point did it become something new? You could say the same for a person, as each of our cells regenerates to the point that nothing is left of the person we were when we were born. Does this mean we are a totally different person? If not, what does it make us? The same person throughout our lives? At its heart, this philosophical query forces one to question the commonly held that identity is only a feature of the physical objects and phenomenon. Yes, the cell question is, our cells regenerate, we're always different, you know, I don't know, what is it, like every 10 years or something, our cells completely regenerate and become new, but our souls stay the same, and you know, if you believe in God, you believe you have a soul, then this question you can answer, and if your soul stays the same, you're still the same person, still the same soul. And last question, number six, the Ring of Gyges. Plato argues that the Ring of Gyges' invisibility and anonymity is the only barrier between a just and an unjust person. He argues that we would all be unjust if we had a cloak of anonymity. Injustice is far more profitable. We are only just because it is necessary. Basically, this question proposes that the only reason we are moral and just is because a lot of bad deeds have consequences. But if those consequences didn't exist, many people would commit these crimes and do illegal things or do immoral things. But for me, I think it would be a little different because even if I had the ring of Gyges, I, um, I, b I believe in God. So that means that God can still see me, even though I'm invisible to everyone else. God can see me. There's nowhere I can hide. He can see my thoughts. He can see my every desire. I can't even hide in my own brain. He can see everything, you know. So I think when you believe in God, the story is a little different now because now you know that the most high can see you. <laughs> but yeah, I love uh, philosophical questions. They're really fun. They really get your brain muscles working. And uh, hope you guys enjoy this and learn something new. And let me know in the comments below, what would you guys do? All right, thank you.